Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. A very good morning to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well and you have been attending all these live classes in this ongoing knowledge series. The class that we have for you today is from Science and Technology. Today we will be discussing about ITER and nuclear fusion. One of the most significant and important topics from the field of science and technology. We talk a lot about nuclear fission but more often than not we ignore the fact that we have one more application of nuclear reactions that is nuclear fusion. In this class today we will be discussing about what exactly is nuclear fusion, how is it different from nuclear fission, what is the significance of ITER and does it have the potential to solve the energy crisis that the entire world is going through right now. Before we do that I really hope that all of you have already subscribed to the YouTube channel of Baiju's IAS. If not, do hit the subscribe button, do hit the bell icon as well and also share this video with your friends. Now let's begin without further ado. The first thing that we will be discussing is nuclear fusion. Now I am sure all of you would have read about the nuclear reactions ever since you were in school. Mainly there are two types of nuclear reactions. One that is called nuclear fission and the other that is called nuclear fusion. The main difference between the two is that nuclear fission is a reaction where one big nuclei is then broken into two parts. When one big commodity is broken into two parts that is what you call nuclear fission. Nuclear fusion on the other hand is when two small nuclei is combined together to form a bigger nucleus. That is the main difference between the two. Now how exactly do we get a lot of energy from this? In case of nuclear fission, the mass of the two nuclei that are formed, if you add that, you will see that there is a difference between the masses of these two as compared to the mass of the original nucleus. The mass difference is what gets converted into energy and that is the energy that is then used in a lot of different applications from weapons to electricity etc. On the other hand, with nuclear fusion, there are some different situations that you must remember. For nuclear fusion to take place, we require extremely high temperatures and extremely high pressure. And that is why if you compare the two, you will understand. While undertaking nuclear fusion is still easier and we have achieved that on a large scale, undertaking nuclear fusion and converting them into something useful is extremely extremely difficult and we are still struggling with it. The entire world is thinking that if somehow we manage to convert nuclear fusion into something that we can handle, it can be the source of endless energy that we require. Nuclear fusion is also the way in which energy is produced at the sun and that is how we know that this particular form of nuclear reaction can be the solution to a lot of problems that we are facing right now. As I told you, nuclear fission is when atom splits into daughter nuclei, into two daughter nuclei. This decay, when we have two smaller components which are made, their sum or the sum of their mass is smaller as compared to the original mass. The mass difference is what gets converted into all this nuclear energy and that particular energy is then used in different applications. For nuclear fusion, which is the topic of our discussion today, there are some very very strict circumstances, very very strict situations which are required. It takes considerable energy for this particular reaction to take place. The conditions required include millions of degrees of temperature and millions of pascals of pressure. That is the reason why we have still not been able to master that technology because in order to make appliances, in order to make infrastructure that can handle this kind of energy, that can handle this kind of pressure will take a lot of time. And that is why the entire world is working together. In fact, one interesting application of nuclear fusion is the hydrogen bomb. The hydrogen bomb is based on a thermonuclear fusion reaction. But because we require so much energy, we require such a high temperature, we require so much high pressure in order 
to have this particular reaction take place, what we actually have to do is in order to initiate nuclear fusion, we have to give that so much temperature that we might require nuclear fission reaction first. So we first require nuclear fission reaction so that a lot of energy is created, temperature is risen and that can result into nuclear fusion. Now, if you actually see this infographic, it gives you a lot of very, very important and interesting information about nuclear fusion specifically. As I said, this is a process by which the sun generates its heat and light and it could be a source of almost limitless source of energy. The key difference being that in this case, there would be no damage to the environment. Now, I'm sure you all would have followed a lot of news about nuclear reactors, about nuclear fission. Although the nuclear reactors have provided us a great alternative when we have to move away from fossil fuels. But the problem in this case is that there's still a lot of nuclear waste that is still not being disposed very, very well by nations around the world. In fact, a lot of nations are still grappling with this problem of how exactly should we dispose or how exactly should we take care of the nuclear waste. Because that is a problem that is associated with nuclear fission. With nuclear fusion on the other hand, that would not be an issue. With nuclear fusion, we will have almost no damage to the environment. The reason being that if you actually take nuclear fusion, the biggest byproduct is helium, which is a non-polluting gas, so it would not really be a problem. Also, if you actually see the components that we require for nuclear fusion, there is no dearth of those materials. For example, we require deuterium. For making that, we require hydrogen. Hydrogen can be very easily extracted from water, so we have almost endless supply of it. Then we need tritium. This is hydrogen ion which can be created by the fusion process. For creating tritium, we require lithium. This lithium metal also is in vast supply throughout the world. We have reserves of at least 1000 years. So everything that we need to be made or to be used in this nuclear fusion process is available to us in large supply. So we don't really have any issues with that. Even the waste that will be produced in this process will not be polluting or will not be of polluting nature to the environment. That is a good way. And that is why countries around the world are working together in an experiment which is called the ITER. The ITER stands for International Thermonuclear Experiment Reactor. As I said, this is a kind of nuclear application that we are still trying to master. And the nations across the world have thought that in order to ensure that we can actually go ahead with this technology, we need to collaborate. That is why in 1980s, in 1985 specifically, this experiment was launched. Now about this experiment, there are a couple of things that you must remember. Number one, where is it based? It is based out of France. So this huge infrastructure, which is the ITER reactors in France. Secondly, this is based on a technology called the Tokamak technology. This is a technology or a model which has been built in Russia, where they built a very, very small scale nuclear fusion experiment which was successful based on this technology called the Tokamak technology. This is the same technology that is being built now on a much larger scale in the form of this ITER reactor. In this particular reactor, over 35 nations have now collaborated and it includes India as well. Different nations have taken up different responsibilities of contributing to this. If you actually see, this project of nuclear fusion is an attempt by all these nations working together to ensure that we can replicate on Earth something that actually happens on the Sun. The ITER will be the first fusion device to maintain fusion for long periods of time. So there have been certain small experiments carried out in some other nations. The one most recently was carried out in UK and I'll tell you about that also. In Russia also some of these experiments have been carried out where they were able to ensure a nuclear fusion reaction but that was on a much smaller scale. Not on a scale that could be converted into commercial application. 
but with this with the ITER the entire idea is to ensure that it is on a much larger commercial scale. The participation in this ITER project is from a lot of nations which include China, European Union, India, Japan, South Korea, Russia, US etc. Also the agreement of 2006 that is called the ITER agreement 2006 says that seven members will share the cost of the project construction, operation and decommissioning. Now you would say that we talked about 35 nations, why are we saying seven? Because when we say 35 nations, we are considering each and every EU nation individually. Also, as this agreement suggests, the cost and everything other than the cost that is maintenance, personnel, etc. All of that are contributed to by all these member nations in the ITER. India also is playing a very, very significant role in this. Let me give you an example of who is contributing what in this project. If you see this model that is highlighted in front of your screen of the ITER, India has been given the responsibility to build something called the cryostat. This cryostat system is being manufactured by India and in India it is being manufactured by Larsen and Tubro. Now, this is specifically a chamber that can maintain very, very low temperatures. In fact, it is the largest stainless steel high vacuum pressure chamber ever built throughout the world. It will provide high vacuum, ultra cool environment for the ITER vacuum vessel and superconducting magnets. So nations around the world, depending upon their expertise, depending upon their capabilities, have taken up the different tasks. As you can see, feeders here will be provided by China. Then we have the US coming through that will be helping with the central solenoid. Then we have South Korea with the thermal shield. South Korea, Russia and EU will also be helping with the vacuum vessel, etc. India over here has been given the responsibility of building the cryostat. The target for the first plasma generation is 2025. But right now, with Russia not really being or the other nation not really being on good terms with Russia due to the ongoing Ukraine-Russia war, the collaboration on all such projects where Russia had to play a part along with the other nations, be it the International Space Station, be it the ITER, has actually hit a roadblock. So we have to see in the future how this progresses and if we are able to meet the target of 2025. Also, it is a European Union, the EU, that is responsible for the largest portion of construction cost, about 45.6% of it will be contributed by EU. Then the remainder is shared equally by China, Japan, South Korea, Russia, as well as India. So it's close to 9% each. That is how we will have a situation where all these countries come together, contribute their bid and result in all this reactor becoming a possibility. Now, let me tell you the latest development that has happened in this particular field. The latest development that has happened is, and it was in the news just a few months back, that there is a successful experiment conducted in the UK where they were able to conduct the nuclear fusion reaction although on a much smaller scale as compared to the ITER. But since that was successful, it gives a ray of hope that yes, the other nations are also working in the right direction. This particular experiment in the UK is called the JET, the Joint European Taurus Facility. It's in UK. It is the largest operational site, one of its kind in the world. And the energy that they were able to produce was through nuclear fusion and they were able to ensure that we do produce energy using the tokamak technology that is the same kind of technology that is being used by ITER that was pioneered by Russia. The tokamak technology is based on a donut shaped apparatus specifically. This is held in place using the superconductor electromagnets as the spin around fuse and release a lot of energy in the space. Now this is the most recent one. The news that I am sharing here, I think it's of the month of Feb only. So this is the most recent development that has happened. It has also given a hope that in the future, the ITER experiment that the other nations are coming through will also become successful. Okay. Now, this is everything that you needed to know from the examination point of view in terms of nuclear fusion and in terms of the ITER. 
Let me see the questions that you have here. One question that I have is, do all members contribute equal amount or different amounts? I think I showed you the distribution, if you remember, about 45 and a half percent is contributed by EU. See, these kind of contributions that you actually see how much would the members contribute, it depends on a lot of things. For example, this ITR reactor itself is placed in EU. So, if something comes out, it would be of a lot more advantage to EU. Also, because it is placed in EU, it would be covered under the EU laws, under the EU jurisdiction. So, they are the ones who have decided to contribute the most. Also, we have to understand EU is not just one single country. It's a group of multiple nations together. So, if you look at the nationwide, con nationwide contribution inside EU, it will be much lower as compared to other nations. But as a group together, they are contributing 45%. And as we saw, the other members are dividing equally the remaining portion, which comes down to lump sum 9% each, including India's contribution as well. Okay. The next question that I have is, can fusion cause a nuclear accident? <laughs> See, there is nothing or there is no technology which is beyond the scope of anything bad happening. If, I don't know if you have seen that uh, web series Chernobyl, which is based on the nuclear disaster, Chernobyl disaster. Now, if you see that once the disaster hit the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the first reaction of everyone was it is impossible. This technology, the technology that we are using cannot have any accident. So, even for the nuclear fusion, especially when you are handling any experiment which requires millions and millions of degrees of temperature, millions and millions of degrees of pressure, there is always a chance of something actually going bad. So, when something actually goes bad, it would result in some kind of a disaster. But yes, that is true with almost all these kinds of experiments, all these kinds of technologies. It is not just specifically related to nuclear fusion only. Okay. Uh, then I have a question, what is cryostat? We just discussed what is cryostat. Cryostat is one of the components of this ITER reactor, the big reactor that is being built in France. Cryostat will be built by India. It has been India's responsibility. It's a huge stainless steel chamber to ensure that we can maintain very, very low temperatures and it can re work as a temperature insulator. So it is made of stainless steel. The largest structure that is made of it, responsibilities of India to ensure that it is built and it will be an integral part of the ITER. Then I have a question what is fission means? I hope <laughs> you joined the, I really hope that you joined the lecture in the very beginning. So if you actually see in the, uh, I discussed in the very beginning of the lecture, there are usually two types of nuclear reactions. There is nuclear fission and there is nuclear fusion. Fission in simple terms means breaking of one big thing into two or more things. This is a nuclear fission. Nuclear fusion on the other hand means when two smaller things combine to make something larger. That is a difference between fission and fusion. Remember, the amount of energy released by nuclear fusion energy will be much, much higher as compared to nuclear fission. Yes, nuclear fusion also releases a lot of energy, but the energy that will be released by nuclear fusion will be much, much higher. This is the process that is used at the sun also. That is how sun makes its heat, makes light, etc. Okay. Then I have another question. Nuclear bomb is based on which technology? Nuclear bomb is based on nuclear fusion technology. See, nuclear fusion technology has not been mastered. So there are very, very few things that are now made on nuclear fusion. The new hydrogen bomb, which is still in the works in most of the nations, that will be based on nuclear fusion. But the nuclear bomb, the atom bomb that were used earlier, all of those were in nuclear fusion only, nuclear fission only. So nuclear fission is a technology that has been mastered, that has been in use for a very, very long time. On the other hand, the nuclear fusion technology is still in the works. We are still working on it. We are still trying to master it. And that is why all the countries are coming together to do that. Okay, perfect. This answers most of the questions that I have from this session. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you liked it and it helped you in your preparation. If you did like it, do hit the like button and do share it with your friends as well. Thank you so much for watching. Do catch us live for the next session at 3 p.m. of this knowledge series. Thank you so much.